Have a look at our text, Matthew chapter 5. We're speaking from uh, verse 10, 11, and 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my, my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Persecuted. That's a nice word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So let's just pray and get into the word of God. And uh, then you can go home and uh, have a nice uh, rest of uh, the day. We honor you today. You're a great God. We appreciate you. And we love you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being the unchanging God that you are. We, we, we honor and worship you today. We pray, dear God, as we share your word, that you'll anoint us. You'll give us insight, Lord God. You'll help us to divide your word correctly. And bless us, Lord God, as we hear. Give us hearts that are receptive and ears that are open, Lord God. Awaken our ears and our hearts, Lord God, we pray. We give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Um, we said last week that uh, persecution, difficulties, afflictions, and whatever difficulty we go through, all that is part of being a Christian. Many times we think that because we are now saved and heading to heaven, that nothing bad will ever happen to us. But the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. But God delivers them out of all of it. And the Bible also says, don't think it is strange when, when you go through trials of your faith. It's not something strange. It's something that if you are going to live for God, it is something that is quite normal. If you have a look at 1 Peter chapter 4, I'll just go through a, a few scriptures and uh, just share from there. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Beloved. So he's talking to the beloved. He's talking to his purchased possession he's talking to his church the church that he gave his life for and still giving his life for he said beloved do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some some strange thing happened to you but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Rejoice evermore. Hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. The Bible says, the Bible does not say, for everything, give thanks. It says, in everything, give thanks. In COVID, in not COVID, in pain, in jail, wherever you are, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you and I, that we rejoice evermore, we pray without ceasing, and in everything we give thanks. Even in the loss of a loved one, we can still in that give thanks. Give thanks to God because He is good. And then it says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. When you are reproached for your faith, the spirit of God, the glory of God rests on your life. 
That's why many times when you see people that have gone through much and still come through it, there is a glow, there is a glory of God in their lives because they have been through the valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side. And then he says, Peter said, don't think it, this is something strange. But this is something that even in the midst of it, you can rejoice in God because you become a partaker of the suffering of Christ. And every time you go through it, the glory and the spirit of God rests upon your life. Hallelujah. Says, uh, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. In fact, afflictions and persecution come to us, and it's almost like the Bible says to expect it. Uh, are you okay? I know that uh, may not be good news to some people. But uh, the whole of Scripture, from the Old to the New Testament, we go through difficulties. Uh, a friend of mine said, uh, I wonder if Jesus preached the gospel that is now preached in the world a lot of times now, whether he will ever get to the cross. Have a look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul writing to a young minister who's uh, getting afraid. And this is what he said. He wrote to the same minister and said, uh, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So here he's writing again to the, same, to the same young minister in the church in Ephesus. Verse 10, 2 Timothy 3. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconia, at Lystra, in Aramoho, uh, sorry, uh, Wanganui, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, if you're not persecuted, please don't go and look for it. It'll <laughs> come looking for you. If you're not persecuted right now, just give God thanks. Praise God. Rejoice evermore. But bless God in all that you do. And if you're not persecuted, don't go look for it. Just give God thanks. Hallelujah. But here Paul is saying to Timothy, I I'm persecuted. I this is I've gone through all this. And then he says, and those who desire to live the way of God, to live the way of the cross, to live godly in Christ Jesus, are going to suffer persecution. Uh, Jesus said, blessed are you when you are so there is a blessing in persecution. Hallelujah. Uh, are you guys all right? Yes. Say amen. amen. Have a look at Psalm 119. Just go to the Old Testament just in case you think I don't know the Old Testament, all right? Psalm 119. Hallelujah. And verse 157, many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your testimonies. Verse 161, 
Princes persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. It says, many are my persecutors. Even rulers persecute me. Princess. You know that David was persecuted by a ruler. Saul was after him to destroy him. Hounded him. Hunted him like a, a common criminal. And he's running. God is looking down and God said, that's very nice. If you can handle a Saul... You can handle any demon in hell. I'll say that again. If you can handle a soul, you can handle any demon in hell. Here is a guy who is persecuted by those that have the authority. Many are my persecutors and my enemy, yet I do not turn away from your word. As we said uh, a few Sundays back, the thing that will remain... It's not the persecution, it's not the problem, it's not the trouble. What will remain is the word of the living God. The earth will pass away, the heavens will pass away, but the word of God abides forever. And here he say, many are my persecutors, but I trust in your word. I trust in that which you have given to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because after all is said and, the, and done, this word will remain. Hallelujah. Uh, are you okay? So our attitude in a time of persecution, the time of trial, in a time of affliction, our attitude, blessed, blessed are thou if you are persecuted for living right, for righteousness sake. Blessed are you. Our attitude to the pain and the problems of life is very, very vital. Had a young man ring me and said, uh, I'm getting really tired. I said, <laughs> excuse me. He was trying to tell me his problems. I said, where do you think you're living? As long as you live on the planet, you'll have problems. Bad things happen to good people. What's wrong with you? Join the human race. Are you, are you all right? Why is the shaking going on and on and on? You know why? So that you will never be shaken after that. After all the shaking going on, God wants to shake everything so that the thing that can't be shaken shall be shaken, but you and I won't be shaken. Yeah. And he'll keep on going until you no longer get shaken. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're the salt of the earth. Are you okay? What makes you think the salt shaker don't get shaken? <laughs> you shake the salt shaker. <laughs> Are you all right? Have a look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace, in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Our attitude in a time of going through the valley of the shadow of death, our attitude when things are being shaken, our attitude when we are persecuted is very vital. Are you okay? He said, we glory in tribulation, knowing the tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character gives us hope. That's a glorious hope. It gives us hope. 
The Bible says hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he hope for what he can see? But we hope for that which we see not, and so do we with patience, 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 wait for it. Now, how do you get patience? Tribulation. Never pray for patience. Because the answer to your prayer is tribulation. I never pray for patience. I've got enough tribulation without praying for more. But your attitude in the tribulation is very vital. We glory in tribulation. We rejoice evermore. For this is the will of God. And it says, verse 2, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, grace is a, a powerful thing. And uh, Paul said he prayed three times and God did not remove the thorn in the flesh. He asked God three times. He prayed. If anybody knew how to pray, it was that fella. Most of the teaching on prayer in the Bible is done by Jesus, Paul, David, and a few others. But Paul teaches on prayer a lot. Yet he prayed three times that God will remove the affliction, the thorn in his flesh. And God said, no. Have you ever had God say no to your prayer? And God said, no, I'm not going to answer your prayer. But God said this, but every time it happens, my grace will be sufficient. And the Bible says we have access to the same grace by faith. And we glory in the tribulation when we are walking by faith. Hallelujah. Because in the end, it produces hope that is eternal. Are you okay? Say amen. amen. Have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side. <laughs> you didn't know you had so much pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody came to church one time and said, I don't like the way he preaches. I was all right before I came. <laughs> he says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Are you okay? Say amen. amen. Our attitude, because trials, tribulations, afflictions are not something strange. It's something that happens every day to you and I who live for God. I think um, about 130, probably on average, 130,000 people get martyred every year. Now, that may be quite... Uh, underestimated because thousands and thousands of people die for their faith every year. God did not promise that we won't have difficulties. In fact, God promised that. But he promised this, my presence will always be with you. He 
He says, I'll be with you till the close of the age. My mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. You walk through the valley of death. You will find the rod and the staff. You walk through the valley of Baca. You are, you'll make the valley a well. Are you okay? Now let's go back to uh, chapter 5 of uh, Matthew. Then I'll close. It says this, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We come to God in humility of heart. Verse 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What's the difference? You come into the kingdom... You're born into the kingdom as a child of God. But when you grow up and you go through the persecution that, is, that many people go through, and then it says this, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom. When you go through that, when you go through the difficulties and the pain of life, and all of us do, one of the things that you will see and find out, you're going to see the kingdom of God in your life. The glory and the grace of that kingdom will never be an experience for you if you are never persecuted. You will never see the power and the glory of that kingdom if you're never going to go through any difficulty. But when you do, Peter said, the Spirit of God and the glory of God will rest upon you, and you are going to know by experience the power and the grace, the righteousness and the peace that surpasses understanding that only comes because you're part of the kingdom. And if you keep on running because you don't like pain, if you keep on running because you don't like people talking about you, because part of the persecution is people are going to talk about you, against you, even though they don't know what happened. People think they know, but they don't. And when they find out so much later, they realize that they have been, they believed a lie because they never understood what was behind what you said and what you did. And if you keep on running, and if you keep on running people down because you don't understand, you will never know by experience the glory and the power, the glory and the power. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You will never see the glory and the power of the kingdom if you keep on running away. But when you stay, that's why the Bible says you and I are more than conquerors because we conquer affliction, we conquer pain, we conquer difficulty, we conquer suffering. We come out the other side having experienced the power and the glory of the kingdom. Don't run. There are people who are running from one city to another, from one church to one. They are running away because they don't want to experience the affliction, the suffering, and the pain. We haven't even suffered in New Zealand. I've been criticized by experts. <laughs> Sat down with uh, two young ladies. The reason I'm saying they're young ladies is because they're younger than my wife and I. We sat down in Lower Hut, had a coffee. One of them passes a church. The other one is uh, single. I uh, think she's close to her 40s. And they were talking about some difficulties 
that their church was going through. And I got the blame for it. I mean, I'm not really, I got the blame for it, but the, you know, this whole denomination, but I got the blame for it. And I asked this young lady, I said, what is your knowledge from your generation? I know that that's what the leaders of that denomination say. What is your knowledge from your gen generation as a, a parishioner, not a, not a leader, but as a parishioner, but the, the generation you're in? Whose fault was it? She said, all of us think that it's your fault. You started the problem. I'm not even part of that denomination. <laughs> but that's part of the persecution you go through. It's so, it's, 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 it's strange when people tell you what somebody else said that you say. And they'll say, oh, no, I, I, oh, hello? That's part of what we go through. But when you learn to live in Him, you're going to experience that power and that glory. Now let me read this to you and then go home. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say, oh, say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. You'll not only experience the glory and the power of that kingdom here, there is a reward waiting for you. So it doesn't end here. That's where it ends. That's where we come to know and everything is going to. The Bible says you're going to know as you are known. And when you see what a, your journey and said, oh, oh. And then you see the time that you really got annoyed and then you realize you should not have been annoyed. It's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says... Even if you give a glass of water, your reward is not going to be taken away. So while we experience the glory of that kingdom right now, heaven come to earth right now, there is still more waiting for us. That's what Moses said. The Bible says Moses refused to be a Pharaoh, to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused that because he respected the reward that God is waiting with for him. So, friends, our light afflictions is but for a moment, but it works for us. It works for us. The affliction, the persecution actually works for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. When we don't look at the things that are seen, but the things that are not. So it's very important where you look when you are afflicted. Where do we look? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Let me pray. Maybe you have been going through difficulties and pain. and Sometimes you don't understand because we look through a glass darkly. But today, your eyes have been open afresh. Maybe just a peep through the window, but uh, you realize that there's glorious hope. Not everything is dark. Everything is fine. If that's you, I want to lift your hand because I want to include you in the prayer. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. If you're watching by telecast, just lift your hand and let me pray. If you lift your hand, put it down again. Maybe you are watching and maybe you're here and you've never made Christ the Lord of your life. Or maybe you had, but uh, you're not in the right place with God. I don't guarantee that the difficulties will go, but I guarantee you this, the peace of God will come upon your life. 
the peace of God that surpasses understanding. And if you want to get right with God, give your life to the Lord again, or give your life to the Lord for the first time, if you're watching by telecast, or if you're here, can you lift your hand up, please? Hallelujah. Bless you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you today. We pray for those whose hands were uplifted. We pray to God that uh, your peace that surpasses understanding be their portion. Recalibrate our minds and our hearts that our attitude, Lord God, our attitude to what happens and what is happening in our world, our attitude will be that of rejoicing. Rejoicing, Lord God, because of the things, not because of the things that are happening, but rejoicing in the midst of it all. That behind everything there is a divine plan and a God who has not abdicated his authority. So bless your people today. We thank you for your goodness. You are a good God. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.